Generative AI seems to be the technology of the moment. Now, of course, it's been around for a while in different formats, but it feels like people are really starting to grab hold of it and see the potential in this technology, especially in our industry as instructional designers or LXDs or even just broader learning and development professionals. Now, I'm no expert in AI, not by any means. And so when Dominic, the founder and CEO of Colossian, reached out and wanted to know if I wanted to have a chat, it seemed like a no brainer. In this conversation, we have a chat about, obviously, the journey he's been on in bringing Colossian into the world and what the product does, and he shares a fantastic demo of how easy it is to use. But we also discuss the pace of development in the AI world, what may or may not be coming, and what the potential is for this technology, specifically within the L&D space. As always, no money was taken for creating this video, no prior agreement was put in place regarding editorial control, and they'll be seeing this video at the same time that you see it go live on YouTube. That said, Dominic was fantastic for giving his time the day before the World of Learning Summit and on the day of a massive announcement for his company to come and have a chat, share his knowledge and experience both in the L&D space and the AI space and show us how this fantastic piece of technology can save us time and energy moving forwards. But I'll let you make those determinations for yourself. Without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Hey, thanks so much for uh, for joining me this morning. I know you're super busy. Um, for those watching this later, it is the day before World of Learning. Um, so <laughs> everyone is running around doing a million things. So thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to come and speak to us. Um, do you know what? Usually I do a big spiel at the beginning of videos, um, but they'll already have heard what I'm here to get out of this conversation. Let's hand over to you. How did we get to where we are today? Thank you so much, Tom. It's really great that you invited uh, me as founder and CEO of Colossian. Uh, I've been basically uh, engaged, engaging with the learning and development community for the past one to two years. And uh, it's always great to talk to experts such as yourself, because eventually we are building a solution for uh, learning and uh, development to create basically videos from scratch and uh, skip all the production hassle and create more engaging content in the form of a video using generative AI. And uh, actually, I am an engineer. Uh, uh, I originally studied in Denmark, at the Technical University of Denmark, um, artificial intelligence and computer science. And that's when I came across the visual aspects of, uh, of innovating with uh, AI today. That was back in 2018. And uh, since then, basically, I founded a, a previous startup before Colossian that was focused on content detection, which didn't really work well. But luckily, we could use all that technical aspect and uh, transform it into Colossian. And today, our mission is to basically um, allow creators to uh, create and localize content easily to fill uh, all the communication gap around the world using videos. This is what we do today, and this is kind of on a high level how, how we arrived here. No, it's, it's interesting. I know we've kind of had that we've kind of spoken previously, but um it it's rare that I get to speak to someone in the L and D sphere who's like a proper AI expert. Um it's kind of the hot topic at the minute. Mm. Um but and that there are definitely some AI experts out there, but I feel like a lot of us are kind of like, this is really interesting, but I really don't understand what I'm looking at and what I'm doing. Um so I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. Um based on that, if nothing else. Um so I mean I mean I guess one one obvious place for us to start is um, hey, let's talk about you know exactly what, what Colossian is, what it does, mm -hmm. um, and, and how you kind of see it being used in the L and D space. Absolutely. So basically, Colossian, uh, uh, at Colossian, we, we are a deep technology uh, company, meaning that we are creating technology for the benefit of uh, learning and development uh, uh, creators. And we created a product called uh, Colossian Creator, and it allows you to create videos within minutes instead of uh, uh, weeks of uh, recording a video in a studio. You just uh, write your text or just copy paste this from somewhere and uh, and uh, you can choose an AI presenter that's an actual living being, uh, a human being, 
and uh, that, uh, that presenter is going to say whatever you typed. And this way you can create uh, all kinds of sales enablement, uh, compliance, uh, onboarding, and further learning and training videos for, uh, for your audience. And uh, the eventual value proposition is the time that we save for you, the cost that you can save by skipping the studio related expenses. And also the fact that you can easily localize content. We have uh, capabilities that can translate your video end to end from a given language to another. And they're just uh, a very powerful way of, uh, of uh, uh, creating videos uh, using uh, this innovative technology. Yeah, it's always fascinating. We have a lot of conversation about this being a kind of, um, like I'm a big fan of using video and learning, uh, as this channel kind of suggests. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of conversation, as I spoke to people about doing this, this conversation, people were quite surprised um, about it being a kind of, I don't know, almost some kind of conflict. Like it's got to be real video against AI video. Mm. Um, but I think actually... What you, sort of what you just said there is exactly the point in that it's not about replacement, it's about finding efficiency and about, you know, when it's the right tool for the job. It, um, indeed, and like, it's also about replacing text because uh, most of the yes. current uh, training is in a textual format. People are just uh, moving towards more of a micro learning direction. They also want to consume content on their phone. And uh, this allows you to not just have text, but also video. Uh, that you can easily put together with the text. Uh, and we are aware of all the trends that COVID started within L&D, right? Digital, digitalization and, and uh, uh, the new generation primarily consumes video. So this way you can basically, uh, uh, you don't have to replace your existing traditional videos, but uh, you can start with the text, right? This is exactly it. And I think like, I'm working with some clients at the minute about um, knowledge base mm -hmm. stuff. And they were like, oh, it'd be great if we could transfer the knowledge base. So it was, yes, a written article, but also a video. And it was like, well, here's what that will cost to put someone in front of a camera. You'll mm -hmm. be there for like two months. There'll be a lot of editing and the cost will be astronomical. Yeah. Um, but there's no benefit in that scenario to, to doing that versus using an AI tool. It's kind of like the perfect solution, really. Um, so tell you what, we've kind of spoken about it a, a, a good bit there, maybe where it might be useful. Um, do, do you want to show us the tool? And um, Yeah, let's, I can let's definitely see what we can do. walk through that. But this is called Sian Creator. We um, aim at creating an interface that can be easily used by people who have no technological or video editing experience. You can import all your existing materials to create a video, but let's just create a new draft today. And here we already have three options to start from. Uh, initially, let's just start from scratch here. Uh, you see an actor on the right side and a script box on the left one. I can type here e anything in 70 plus languages. So we can start with welcome to this compliance training video. I hope you will enjoy it. And now we just type this piece and uh, we can already preview our video. Welcome to this compliance training video. I hope you will enjoy and it. And you see that the actor's mouth is not moving yet. Uh, that happens when you ch generate the video because that's when our AI uh, algorithms kick in. And that's how we transform this existing sound wave that you heard into lip and facial movements of the actor that you see here, which is a real person, actually. Let me just show you quickly a, a real uh, like uh, looking video. This one is this is the this is one I created for Procter and Gamble recently, who uses Class CM for internal training and development. Welcome to this presentation. Thanks for inviting Colossian to showcase their product at the Global Sales Summit. Omar has mentioned that Procter and Gamble sales capability leaders are truly interested. You in see that the actor's mouth is moving just according to the way uh, uh, you mm. type the text, and here comes one of the greatest aspects. You may have heard that the actor or the guy here talked about sales summit, not marketing summit. So you can just click on edit draft and you can go back to your existing video and you can basically change, uh, uh, change the, the words here. So if you, if it says marketing, then you can change it to sales and vice versa. Uh, so the good thing here is that once you produce a video using traditional methods, and it gets outdated, then you are done there. But with Colossian, you can just go back to existing content and replace 
words or sentences or even paragraphs and reuse that content. This is the eventual benefits. Um, Fantastic. For further features, and I just sorry. just to go back, for, sorry, I, I'm guessing the reason that you do the the preview in the editor and then you only do the mouth movement when you generate is to keep the kind of um, like the real time rendering time low so that you can be creating pretty rapidly rather than having to create and wait for it to render exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. So out. we are adding more and more preview capabilities. Of course, in the future, we plan to also feature the lip syncing in the preview, but for now, due to technological constraints, it's not possible. Um, and I'm guessing if there's that will keep the um, keep the actual strain on the local machine pretty low as well in terms of like working uh, sort of working capacity. It's not going to take up a load of, um, you know, quite often with tools. Like if you did this manually, let's say in some form of animation software like um, After Effects, let's say, um, you know, you've got to have a heck of a machine to do it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, and be able and to this is full cloud it. based, so you don't, you don't have to do any rendering. Awesome. And if you do a regular video, That's you are used to the fact that videos have to render, right? And uh, it's the same yep. for us. So uh, there's a rendering yeah. step. Um, but what's also exciting here is that, of course, you can add actors of uh, of uh, yourselves, of, of, from your team. So there's, we, we, for example, have myself as an actor. So you can add anyone from your team. And we have an ever-growing uh, library of uh, all kinds of actors. Um, for some, you can change the clothing, so you can also reduce the repetition of your videos. So that's really powerful. And uh, for some, you can also change the uh, facial uh, movements and the facial characteristics. So you can make, for example, look, behave excited or even serious. Wow, that's so. So that's possible for sort of any user to do is to have the, their own characters created and put into it like that, you know, their, I don't know, their head of sales or head of customer services or whatever it might be. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's uh, exactly right. And, um, also with the, with the current trend of chat GPT, we are aware of the power of capabilities using, um, uh, text-based, uh, solutions powered by AI. So we are the first uh, company in the text to video space to also feature an AI assistant that you can see here. And this AI assistant can uh, basically just uh, create also the script for you. So if you want uh, it to create, uh, maybe um, you can, you can type, you can type it to create a script about compliance training. And we can just click here. And you see that uh, the text is being created. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can have uh, all the uh, all these examples and uh, you can use it in your videos. If you need some uh, creative ideas, uh, you can just use this text. You see that it's already here. And uh, you can just uh, edit our video accordingly. First, let's talk about the uh, importance of compliance. Maybe we can delete this paragraph so we fit into the character limit. And now we have a script for our video, given that we review it, of course. Yeah, I suppose just like any other kind of generative AI, it's all then about figuring out how to uh, sort of how to shape your prompts and feed it the right information exactly, to be able exactly. to create a good quality script. That's correct. But uh, we do everything when it comes to UX to fix it and um, and uh, make it easy to use. Um and as you may have seen, we also have a way to just give a prompt and also the prompt will create a video for you end to end. This is just the AI script writing assistant. Um, and maybe as a, as a, one of the final examples, let me just share you, uh, the true power of localization using Colossian. This is one of my favorite features because I know that so many people in many parts of the world don't speak English. So they, you have to create like content that's localized to their native language. So with, uh, with our current uh, system, you are able to uh, just uh, translate a video end to end, including all these text pieces and also the script. So we can translate this to German. This is a more complex video, so it's exciting to see the results, of course, and also to French, let's say. So you see that the script and also the text were translated to a given language. And we can just preview this and you will hear the French uh, voice speaking. Mm. 
Bienvenue à cette présentation. Merci d'avoir invité Colosseum à présenter son produit au Global Marketing Summit. And if you have any issues, you can just edit the current script box, fix some content there, mm. or you can even edit it here. And uh, this way you can create videos in 10 different languages easily with just a few clicks of a button. And we are using the most advanced translation algorithm that's currently available. I mean, that, uh, that is, I think... I think it would be easy to underestimate the impact that kind of thing has. Um, but I, I think cer certainly I've worked with clients where it's like, okay, video is always a dangerous option because there are, I don't know, six languages for every piece of content. Mm -hmm. So the cost is huge or the development time is huge. The fact that not only do you allow for variants of language, but the translation is automatic um i think that's that's pretty that's pretty cool indeed we we worked a lot on it and uh, we understand the importance these are some very complex uh, uh like uh, mechanics underlying mechanics mm. but uh but from uh you know when you are creating a new technological company you have to truly listen to all the people that are trying to use it uh, use your product and we understood the importance of translation we just wanted to make sure that the lives of our um We, we call our users creators because we don't like the word user. <laughs> creator is like much more positive in our, in our view. And, uh, and our creators actually, they, they face so much issues, as you said, with translation. And, and uh, hopefully with this capability that we have today, and we see it, uh, the whole work workflow is just easier and uh, more content can be created with the same level of quality. And uh, thus the audience can be more engaged and more learning and 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 uh, training goals can be met no i think it's, 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 it's always interesting with these kinds of things because i think for a lot of us um it was always kind of the case that ai was a technology that was constantly developing but i think a lot of the major developments kind of happened without all of us seeing it mm -hmm. You know, those that were in the industry very much knew what was coming our way. I don't think we quite got it until very recently. Um, and it feels like now kind of you know, there's 101 conversations going on about AI. Um, but I feel like what we often lack is that. And here's how it makes mm -hmm. genuinely our job easier or our learners experience better. Um, and this is a great example, whether it's the translation, the ability to change the character after the fact, all those things, or just the efficiency from a, from a creator perspective um, of how it's genuinely making our lives a little bit easier or a little bit better uh, in terms of the learner experience. Um, so I, I guess one, one question I do have is um, from a, a, a kind of, Um, I don't know, I guess, what's the right word? Um, a kind of deployment perspective. Mm -hmm. um, is, is this something that's going to, you know, is, is there more to come or is this kind of like the technology is now here and this is what it does and this is kind of as much as we can expect at the moment? You were asking the whether, I'm, whether I'm aware of any further advancements that's not out on the market yet, right? Uh, is, 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 is that what you're primarily interested in? Yeah, I guess, we, or maybe like, you know, for instance, where we are now, you you know, It, you, let's look if we just colossian it's able to write the script mm -hmm. record the audio generate uh, generate the movement for the character um i can localize it um is there is there anything more to more to come i guess i mean what 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 else is the potential here yeah so you know we have like lots of great ideas but uh, but uh, these require like very complex uh, technological investments um Um, for example, one of my favorites is uh, the fact that you will be able to control uh, also the body movement, uh, maybe based on the script. So this way you can uh, create uh, videos for, let's say, deaf people who cannot hear. Uh, so you can use like sign language with the act actors. That would be like, groundbreaking in my opinion, because then you could basically, all the videos you create, you can support also sign language with them. And this would just open up whole world of possibilities uh, to talk to uh, an audience which was always like ignored before or, or just uh, deprioritized, right? And I, I love that. That's I feel like that's such an... It's so often 
accessibility elements get overlooked mm. especially in kind of bleeding edge technology mm. because it's it's not always and i apologize for wording it this way it's not always convenient from a development perspective oh, yeah. to stop and think about that it'd be much easier to run in a, a million miles an hour forwards right and get right to the <laughs> extreme but leaving people behind is uh, certainly from an L and D perspective for us it's a it's a killer because then we go okay now we still have to go and record video to put sign yeah. language on it or to exactly. you know, apply closed captions all those kinds of things and you know it's so, uh, it's a struggle so let's be honest it's a struggle yeah. for companies oh, yeah. and everyone yeah. and and uh, this would be a great innovation in my view but at the same time uh, other things that we are working on are uh, also being able to change the clothing and the uh, appearance of these uh, people so you can basically put your company merchandise on them and you can just customize it and further reuse the repetition. And what we also want to do now is just a f more interactive, like conversational experience. So you can place these AI avatars facing each other and they can just simulate a conversation. So you can create like a scenario based training video this way. Um, that's, that's, and that's, uh, sorry. No, I was just, just going to say that that's, it's fantastic to hear that these kinds of things are you know, being thought about. Because um, I think so often, as I say, where we don't get to have conversations with people or things that are going on, things just kind of arrive on the market and we go, oh, that's really cool. I wish I knew that was coming down the line when I made X, Y and Z decisions. Um, it's really exciting. But I'm also just thinking this the tool the, the sort of when i look at this and i'm thinking back i don't know maybe a, a few years ago in my own career and thinking God, if i had access to this like there have been so many occasions where i've wanted to go let's do video and it's been like it's not cost effective we don't have the time we don't have the space we don't have the equipment and now it could be don't worry i'll just log in and i'll get that video ready for a, at least a draft in a couple of hours yeah exactly. um the ability to rapid prototype video mm. is incredibly powerful i think at the minute sort of storyboarding video out and scripting and rescripting and you know maybe drawing stick figures about where we're going to put people in a room to do it yeah. um as opposed to being able to go oh actually here's just a quick render of of what the video will be yeah exactly but that's and night and day and you know it's um like um it's not just uh humans that we are focusing on and, and you mentioned that you know like video itself is so crucial indeed but today it seems like Colossian only has or only focuses on, focuses on advancing this human or avatar side of training but we believe that in lnd by placing a real human there what i mean is an actual human who speaks in a real mm -hmm. way just that just uh, increases engagement there have been several reports about yeah. that and uh, and we truly believe in it in it but at the same time we are also researching ways of um, creating videos without humans. So uh, for LND, that could be like specifically nice if you are creating a training situation about a certain topic like uh, fire safety or something like that. And then you could create videos from scratch or just snippets or just some kind of like uh, 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 scenes, uh, maybe from a movie uh, that you would be creating instead of just having the editing skills and, and all the CGI, right? So what we want to achieve is some kind of uh, option in the future for our creators so they can create also snippets of video uh, using AI. And we see the trends, we see them coming together, but it's still a bit far. Like technology is still not there yet, but I think we are advancing there. So maybe in the future, you will be able to not just create this AI avatar speaking and, and uh, engage your viewers in an experience and also use a easy editor, but you will also be able to just create smaller snippets of the video using prompts or maybe some kind of an other input. To be honest, I'm not sure about it as of today. Not sure what's going to be the available way of, of, of uh, achieving such results. Also, I'm not sure whether using these prompts that, you know, are, are use these days are, are the most effective i have some doubts uh, but it's still a great way to be honest um so yeah this this is what the future brings and at the same time uh so many of our uh customers ask these questions and potentially it'd be great to address them that voice cloning is here already so you can basically clone your voice in english and the english text to speech the way you transform text into voice is like great but now in the next one to two years, I think uh, 
foreign languages are going to uh, be much higher quality. So up until now, it's been primarily English, where you can see or hear these quality uh, 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 like sounds. But uh, I see a great uh, step towards uh, expanding this to further languages. And I think that's going to be a major milestone in the coming years. Yeah, you know, I think it's um, it, it's always really interesting hearing from someone like yourself who knows the knows the space largely because <laughs> it's interesting. Those of us that don't kind of go, oh, this will happen and that will happen, and those who do know the space maybe go, ah, oh, well, it might be this or it might be that, but we're not sure yet, and we'll see where it goes. Um, probably a slightly more educated view on what might happen there in terms mm. of AI. Um, but I mean, just kind of broadening it for a moment, because it's not very often I, I get the opportunity to speak to someone like yourself. Um, it, it does feel like AI was a long way off and in terms of being usable day to day, um, like it was there in big implementations. Um, but then in a relatively short period of time, it went from really far away to, OK, it's here and it's great. Mm. Um, should we be kind of be looking on the horizon again and expecting that kind of it feels like nothing's happening and all of a sudden, bam? Or is it now going to be, do you think, more kind of constant and rapid iteration? Because at the minute it feels like every week there's a, mm -hmm. you know, a new advancement from, from my perspective, but that's probably not true mm -hmm. on a technical level. From my perspective, I see these big milestones that happened in the past year or so. Like mm. these milestones are not um, are so much larger than the previous ones in the past years, right? Um, mm. I personally don't see this constant, uh, mm, like um, innov innovative, like uh, iterations. Uh, I I, mm. I understand these big milestones and what the public uh, uh, just thinks about them, and I fully agree with it. But uh, I don't think it's going to. Mm, just continue developing at this pace at least for the next period it might slow down for the general public and maybe in 16 or 18 or maybe 12 months time there will be another big thing another big innovation but that's just how things uh, uh, work but I don't see it happening every month or so from now on uh, if, yeah. if that answers your question um, from from our perspective Absolutely. what's required for these videos uh, or for our solution uh, there were not so many things coming out in the past years, to be honest. Um, this whole chat GPT and generative AI hype is great, but um, based on what, based on how things were evolving, um, I wouldn't say that every month or so we are going to have like brand new innovative stuff coming out. So that's my opinion, of course. It could be that you know. I cannot, I cannot foresee the future, right? I don't know what each academia is working on, but that's what I see as a whole right now. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I say it's just it's always fascinating to to get to get a different view on it because mm. it's I think you're right as a as a consumer you get a very specific view of of, of a space, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we we tend to see product launches as opposed to the development of a product, mm. um, which is two very different things. I mean, yeah, exactly. So, so I mean, it's all of a sudden, indeed. Uh, yeah. I guess, I guess it feels that way for us. I'm sure those mm. that have worked in the space, they're going, no, we've been working on this for years. Like, it, yeah. it's just a constant. Right? I mean, exactly. Um, for us as well. Like, so many people are so fascinated. But, you know, mm. I'm, I'm not saying I'm bored. It's simply just, I, I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this for the past four years, uh, every day and uh, and every other day or so, and uh, it's just something that you get used to. And um, I think all the people who've been using it for quite some time, they get used to it as well. But this it's still, it's still. I think it's the reason for this is because it's just breaking um, the, you know, the interesting aspect of a technology that that uh, enters uh, the market is that it has these waves of adoption. And we are just seeing these waves as they approach uh, new and new market segments and uh, people experience it. It's similar to the internet or just major technological revolutions. Of course, I don't think it's that, it's that big, but it's still just re um, a similar effect, right? And uh, it's very interesting to see it, but uh, I'm not sure whether we can keep up the, with this uh, level of surprises right because all the people are so surprised wow you can do this now and it's so realistic 
I'm not sure whether we can release something in six or 12 months time that we have this big of a surprise factor, which is fine, of course, but it's just a, a general new thing. Yeah, no, I think it, I think the danger is if you try and do that, and let's face it, industries have tried to do that, they still do, You, they kind of end up releasing like novelty features mm. that aren't useful. They're just going, look, we launched a thing because we have to, because we promised we'd launch a new thing every month. Mm. Um, I know in L&D, we, we get a lot of that okay. from a lot of authoring tools going, we made a thing. And we're like, no one asked for that. <laughs> That's not useful. I see. Um, could you fix this thing that's been broken for a year? No, nope, we're releasing this new exciting feature. It's like, oh dear. Um, whereas I think, yeah, you know, when when we when we look at tools like this, you kind of go, when you even just the interface of what you were showing us, there were, you know, I, I I'm I'm a big fan of going. I should be able to look at your tool and be able to see how to use it. Um, if I have to receive like a week's training, then you've designed it badly. Um, mm. you know? exactly. um, so I think, you know, from, from a user perspective, if, if the argument is effective and efficient, um, and it's just going to make your, your creator experience easier, mm. um, then you don't want it changing every month, two months, six months. I mean, yeah, you want to, exactly. you want a platform you can rely on. You want cool stuff available to you when it's available. Mm -hmm. Like if there's something meaningful, what you don't want is the, I don't know, the render button jumping around the screen every other month just yeah just saying there might be a very popular video editor that keeps moving things mm. through different menus um <laughs> but yes no i think that it's it's really exciting so i guess we're, we're coming up on the end of our time um but what one question i'd really like to ask is in terms of um you know the L D toolkit i always talk about what what we as instructional designers or e-learning developers have as our toolkit mm -hmm. um where do you where do you kind of see people getting the most value out of this tool where is it going to be the the obvious choice if i'm working on what kind of project right now why should i kind of rush to the website as it were i primarily recommend um, compliance training uh, onboarding really important because in onboarding you see lots of things lots of aspects of the onboarding change so you can just go back and edit these mm -hmm. kinds of videos easily uh, not even mentioning the localization part and uh, sales enablement is extremely popular, all kind of scenario-based training videos with multiple actors. Um, um, there are these diversity inclusion videos as well, as far as I know, uh, those are really popular too in, in the L&D space. And, um, and further videos about software training for even partners, clients, or external people. And uh, at the same time, uh, cybersecurity training. So these are these are the most popular use cases within L and D. But we are surprised each week because uh, there are just new use cases coming up. We are still a younger company, right? And and we are still finding the uh, the best way we can help our customers in in uh, in uh, adopting these use cases. And what we are doing strategically now is uh, we are hiring internal L and D experts for our company. Uh, so they can help uh, with the adoption of our product for L&D. We fully want to emerge ourselves in the field. And uh, we also want to understand all the effects and impacts we can uh, leave on our, on our customers using our solution. So for that, um, we are hand-holding them and, and helping them to uh, create much better learning content than before. Well, I, I, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us um for those watching um i you know there is a there's an option to create um some free video on the website mm. um i would like really wholeheartedly suggest go and take a look um i did i was really impressed um thus thus we're having this conversation um so uh, there's a link to the website in uh, in the description of this video go check it out it is well well worth the time um dominic thank you so much for taking the time thank to chat you so much us, especially on such a busy day indeed it's a it's a truly exciting day because of the word of learning and the announcement of our recent fundraising on this monday but uh it's always a pleasure to talk to uh people like you and uh, i hope that your audience really enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if there are any questions i'm always happy to sit down and have conversations about the space and uh, share some thoughts so yeah thank you 
I hope you found this video interesting and maybe a little helpful. Dominic shared some fantastic insights on where we're heading. And if you do want to check out Colossian, I've included the normal website link in the description of this episode. Click it and you can actually create a video without needing to put any sign up details in directly from the homepage. It's a fantastic tool. You should check it out. Thank <music> you.